uh, happy to uh, welcome North Central City Council meeting of January 5th, 2017. I'm City Council President Bill Dwight, and I'll be presiding tonight. Um, normally we open with public comment. Um, we actually don't have anyone queued up for public comment. And uh, as such, uh, I'm prepared to ask the administrative assistant to call the roll. Councilor Bidwell. Here. Councilor Present. Councilor Here. Councilor Klein. Here. Councilor Lavard. Present. Councilor Here. Councilor Here. Councilor O'Donnell. Here. Councilor Sheriff. Here. We have a quorum, so we have a meeting. Um, start off, uh, I have an announcement of a public hearing regarding a poll petition received from uh, National Grid, and this is in accordance with the provisions of Section 22, Chapter 166 of the General Laws. A public hearing will be held at 212 Main Street, Hampton, Massachusetts, on January 19th at 7.05 p.m. on the petition of National Grid to erect poles and wires upon, along, under, or across one of uh, or more public ways in the city of Northampton. The petition concerns a pole in front of the new development at number 121 Hinckley Street. Um, and by the way, that meeting's actually in these chambers, th that hearing. Um, so there you go. Done and done. Uh, one minute announcements. Councilors have any announcements to start the new year? Wow. Okay. Nothing nothing new, nothing Gosh. happening. Okay. Everyone had a good time. Wish everyone a happy new year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. right no, back at you. All the councilors are wishing everyone a happy new year. <laughs> and everyone at home. Or a better <laughs> new year than the city. last year. Uh, so now we come to communications and proclamations from the mayor. I have, uh, I have, well, one announcement to make. I did communicate this uh, to you, uh, uh, I think, believe through your administrative assistant, but um, the annual joint meeting of the city council and school committee, um, which is by charter, um, I've actually sent out a notice today um, scheduling that for, uh, traditionally it's been on a Thursday, but we're scheduling it for Tuesday, January 31st um, at 7 p.m. at JFK. Um, the issue of how the Tuesdays shook out, uh, this, uh, or the Thursdays shook out is that the, the fourth Thursday, um, is a little too close to gov the Governor Baker's submission of his budget. So we wanted to, um, have a little bit more time to analyze that as part of the presentation. So, uh, you'll get a formal meeting notice about that, but I was going to sort of announce <coughs> that. Um, the other communication I was going to make tonight is the, um, uh, Human Rights Commission adopted a resolution in November um, at their November 30th meeting um, and I believe and asked that it be communicated uh, to various state and federal elected officials and um, and including the City Council and members of the Commission requested the opportunity to come before you uh, to sort of formally uh, read and present the uh, proclamation um, I believe that uh, initially Lori Lozell was going to be here to do that. Um, she appears to be running late, but Joel Morse, who's a member of the commission, is here. Um, so if you'd like, uh, actually, and here comes Lori. <laughs> so, um, Hi, Lori, you just got introduced. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, I'll just uh, do a tap dance. While Lori takes her coat off. Actually, while you have, I think there was no public comment. No. No. Public comment. Yes. Yes. And actually, let me take this time to give Lori a chance to catch her breath to announce uh, the folks who are trying to stream uh, our the NCTV uh, stream. Their website is down, some malware problems. So we're uh, so actually, it's kind They're of not going to hear you. Announcing it. Not you hear can you. see it anyway. So sorry, <laughs> you folks on. TV. We're watching on television. You can feel smug in knowing that you're the only ones who have it available now. When NCTV comes back up, it will be uh, available on demand. The greatest, the greatest hits. Uh. So I now introduce a member, uh, Lori Lozell, who's one of the members of the Human Rights Commission. So, so hi, my name's Lori Lozell, and I'm. Uh, is I, am I speaking properly into this? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Kept on the web. <laughs> okay. The language is correct. Everything so, is over. So, uh, hold on a second. I just had to walk here. 
it took me longer than I thought. Uh, I live in Ward 3, and I happen to be a member of the Human Rights Commission. Two months ago, we took up this resolution at the suggestion of a resident of Florence. She suggested we do some kind of sanctuary city resolution. And in December, we approved it. We sent it out. So you might have already received it, but we decided last month to bring it to you in person. So I'll just read it to you. Human Rights Commission resolution supporting Northampton's recommitment to sanctuary city status and the values of a democratic nation. Whereas in 2014, Mayor David E. Narkowitz adopted an executive order declaring Northampton a sanctuary city insofar as its police force would not, quote, honor and enforce any detainer request from U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, that is non-criminal, and also committed to city policies and procedures that, quote, ensure the highest level of public safety while building trust between law enforcement and community residents and visitors, and that it will be, quote, the continuing policy of the city of Northampton to assure equal, just, and fair treatment of all persons who live in and visit the city. And whereas, on November 20th, 2014, the City Council unanimously endorsed the Mayor's executive order with a resolution stating that the city, quote, has been and continues to be enriched by the contributions of community members who have traveled, traveled from all points of the globe to make their homes here. And whereas the City Council on November 17 endorsed a resolution declaring its commitment to protecting this community's re residents from racist, Islamophobic, anti-Semitic, misogynistic, homophobic, transphobic, anti-immigrant, and anti-refugee sentiment and acts and all other targeting of residents based on their identities or perceived identities. And whereas the Northampton Human Rights Commission has thrown wholehearted support behind this city's commitment to resettle refugees through a program of the Catholic Charities, and whereas the Northampton Human Rights Commission condemns bigotry in all its forms and supports civil liberties of people without regard to race, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, national origin, gender identity, ability, citizenship, or immigration status. And whereas the president-elect while campaigning repeatedly espoused beliefs and supportive policies that would demean, target, discriminate against and endanger people from all those groups and more. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Northampton Human Rights Commission stands solidly behind the mayor in his efforts to maintain the city's status as a sanctuary city, even if it means losing federal funding. And be it further resolved that because the loss of said funds could endanger populi populations of people who are particularly vulnerable, we encourage our city leadership to make every effort to find alternate sources of money to make up for such losses. And be it further resolved that we implore federal leadership to not withhold federal funds that are a vital part of the safety net within our city. And be it further resolved that the Northampton Human Rights Commission fully agrees with the City Council's statement that our city, quote, has been and continues to be enriched by the contributions of community members who have traveled from all points of the globe to make their homes here and be it further resolved that the Northampton Human Rights Commission articulates its commitment to welcoming any residents who feel targeted or unsafe based on their identities or perceived identities to share their experience with the commission so it may offer support and guidance of where to get help and, therefore, and be it further resolved that the Northampton Human Rights Commission is guided in its work by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights adopted in 1948 <coughs> by the United Nations and now hereby recommits to being a city body dedicated to education about the values and ideals espoused by that document and be it further resolved that the Northampton Human Rights Commission stands behind the City Council's resolution that rejects authoritarianism and white supremacy and redoubles its commitments to the values of freedom, justice and equality that bind us as a community and to protecting those whose security and well-being may be threatened in the current political and social climate. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution shall be sent to, and then it lists a long list, which you know about. But it, it should be noted. Should I read it? Well, no, but I think the president-elect is, is first and foremost in that, in 
that list, I believe. Yes, President Barack Obama, U.S. President-elect Donald Trump, U.S. Senators Elizabeth Warren and Ed Markey, U.S. Representatives Richard Neal and Jim McGovern, Massachusetts Governor Charles Baker, Massachusetts Attorney General Maura Healey, Massachusetts Senate President Stanley Rosenberg, <coughs> Massachusetts Representative Peter Cocott, the Northampton City Council, and Mayor David Narkowitz. Approved by the Human Rights Commission on this day, November 30, 2016. So that's what we did. And I just have one thing, a couple things I want to say as a city resident and member of the Human Rights Commission, but not speaking for the Civil Rights, the, the Human Rights Commission. Only take me a minute. Um, I know some people say resolutions like these are like whistling in the wind. I may have once thought that myself, but I think differently now. I read a real news story this week about a woman in Boston who started her own house cleaning business and is raising her 10-year-old daughter there. The woman has been living here for 14 years on a work permit, but with no permanent citizenship. She's in a precarious situation, even though her daughter is a U.S. citizen. She loves this country like everyone in this room loves this country. And now she's deeply fearful about her place here. There are people like her in Northampton. The policies proposed by the president-elect and supported by a small minority in this country want to oversimplify this issue into legal or illegal, but that is not the way it works. This election made me think a lot about words. They matter. Our incoming president says things that are full of hate, but then wants to pretend he didn't mean those awful words. We can, let those state we can never let those statements go unchallenged. As a community, we need to speak out constantly and loudly. We can't let the ideas espoused by our president-elect ever seem normal. We have to stand against the normalization of what is at the core hate and fear and say this is not the American way. In doing that, there's an urge to feel proud to live in such a good community, but that would be missing the point, I think. It's the very least we can do. Hold fast to the democratic principles that are foundation of this country. Thank you. Thank you. So. Anyone have any questions for Lori? <coughs> I um, thank you for this. Uh, thank you for the support of our support of the mayor's initiative and and also our, our original resolution. And, and also, I'm grateful for your your personal statement because uh, um, you know back in the day when you used to sit where Amanda's sitting right now. You would you would listen to you would hear people frequently railing against uh, you know the city council's foreign policy or national policy issues as if you know when we're declaring opposition to the Iraq War for instance and you know who are we a bunch of podunk counselors to say but the argument that silence is complicity is very is is real. And if we don't speak up, if we if we sit on our hands, there is it allows people to feel that we are consenting or allowing or ignoring uh, actions that we consider unconscionable. So I'm really grateful that you said that. Yeah. And I'm and I'm grateful that the Human Rights Commission actually crafted this with the same intent of reinforcing what we've said over and over again. So I appreciate that very much. Councilor Klein. Um, I have been serving since the beginning of the second term as the liaison to the Human Rights Commission. And um, I just want to say thank you to the Human Rights Commission. It's an, I think it's an incredibly important and well-worded uh, resolution. And uh, I'd just like to say to my fellow city councilors sitting with the Human Rights Commission on a monthly basis over the last year, um, I've been really impressed by their thinking and their work, and they're developing a really ambitious and important agenda for uh, the coming year. And um, I hope we can continue to kind of have you come and, and tell us where you're at with what you're working on, because I think there are things that will be very, um, uh, very important to the city as we move forward um, under the, the current uh, or the incoming governance. Um, by the Trump administration. So uh, just thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you, Joel. Council LaBarge. Yes, and I also want to thank you, Laura, and the Human Rights Commission. This is extremely important. And 
Another thing is that apparently if you ever do another resolution again and you're going into race and whatever, that you also look at also putting in in people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. That's been a big thing. You know, I mean big. Throughout that, the Kennedy's um, running for president, I mean, he actually had mocked a reporter in a wheelchair, and that has upset many people with disabilities. So I, I just want the commission to look at that big picture and eventually put in with people with disabilities. But I should note that actually they do mention abilities. This resolution, so. Yeah, we, we agree with you. Council Chair. I also would like to thank you. Um, and to sort of echo or maybe bolster one of your points, I wanted to <clears throat> note that you, you referenced another resolution in here that people thought was sort of whistling in the wind or, or sort of outside the bounds of what we should be talking about, which was the, the resolution welcoming Syrian refugees, which then had an incredibly real impact. Yes. Um, so thank you for, for making that point. It's exactly true. I was at a meeting with Susanna Crolius and yesterday, and she said the reason why they came to Northampton was because of the resolution that you all adopted. So, so yeah. Any other comments, questions? Councilor Bidwell. Just two, two, two other instances of, of, the, of the importance of things like this. I uh, got a call yesterday from a friend of mine in Newburyport who I had told about the, the, at the time I hadn't actually seen this latest resolution, but I told him about the series of resolutions and how important we took these matters and the welcoming of, of refugees matter. And he said that he had a city councilor in Newburyport who wanted to see our resolutions and realized that they were, it was time for them to get on board. And when we, so we, we all know that there are ripple effects. Um, and the leading by example matters, but it was a, there, was, there was an example right, right there. The other thing I wanted to mention is that I've been in touch with folks at Institute for Policy Studies in Washington who are forming a network of city councilors, selectmen, aldermen from around the country uh, in cities and towns that are doing one version or, or another of declaring themselves sanctuary cities, and there's about 300 such cities now. Uh, and they're actively forming a coalition. And so they're, 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 there's power in numbers. And so when we do something like this, we need to think about how we are also uh, showing solidarity with other cities and communities around the country. And um, it's, it's extremely important to do. It ain't, it ain't whistling in the wind. Council Klein. Really quickly, just uh, to follow up on that point, we have two towns immediately adjacent to us, East Hampton and Amherst, that are working on sanctuary city uh, resolutions, executive orders, and they're in consultation with us in preparing those. So um, even closer to home, the Newburyport, it's happening as well. All right. Thank you again. Thank you. Ron, or anything else? No, just to say that I did, on December 5th, my office did transmit copies of that uh, resolution to all of the, um, all of the elected officials, including I, the uh, president-elect. Got, got my copy. So. I, I should also note that uh, I, I was trying to call it up. The Internet's not working very well, but uh, a letter from Congressman McGovern relative to our original resolution affirming and applauding its intent and and reassuring us that that point of fact, it does make a difference. So, okay, <clears throat> there are uh, no pending presentations. So with that, we'll move to the consent agenda, which includes, I'll accept, uh, um, actually I'll accept a motion for it first. Move to approve. Second it. Okay, and in it contained in is the approval of the minutes from December 15th, uh, 2016 meeting. Move to approve. Second. A uh, second? Okay. Discussion? No discussion. What am I saying? All those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Now we recess for Finance Committee. An exciting moment in the evening. Yeah? Yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Council Murphy will now be presiding. Great. And would you call our roll, please? Councilor Simon. Present. Councilor Navarro. Present. Councilor Murphy. 
Here. Here. First item is the approval of our minutes from December 15, 2016. Second. Second. Any uh, additions, alterations? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. All right. The first um, item in our meeting tonight is 16226, an order to authorize the expenditure of $3,120 from the Senior, S Senior Services Gift Fund. Order that the following expenditure <coughs> from the Senior Services Gift Fund be approved $3,120 for 13 software licenses for use by the Senior Center Computer Room. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. Do I second? Second. Excellent. And the mayor is here to talk. So, councilors, you may remember a, a couple of meetings ago, you approved a transfer from this gift fund uh, to pay for uh, the actual new computers. Um, and, I and I think this was, um, there was an oversight that the actual licenses that accompanied them weren't included in that original uh, in that original order. So this is the remaining balance um, to cover uh, the licenses, the software licenses for the computers. And because they're part of the senior center, um, it comes out of their, their gift fund. Uh, so asking for an additional transfer of 13,000, uh, 3,000 rather to cover those licenses. Any questions for the mayor? Councilor, question? Down so. oh, You're set? Hearing no questions, all in favor of po positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the next is 16227. Upon the recommendation of the mayor, authorize the payment of prior year bill in the amount of $1,379 for legal work, be it ordered that the council authorizes the payment of a prior fiscal year bill from 2016 in the amount of $1,378. $1,379 to Jankowski and Spencer PC for legal work relative to land acquisition. That was DPW, was it? Um, it actually was conservation land. Oh, conservation. Um, uh, and so uh, this was the title uh, work, um, the work in terms of all the title search and the and the closing uh, work that was hand, that's handled by Jankowski and Spencer. And it was a bill that obviously didn't get to us in time to be paid before the end of the fiscal year. So uh, we are required to have a vote of the city council authorizing us to pay this prior year bill. And lawyers are usually quick with bills, you would think. Yes. <laughs> well, this one, uh, <laughs> a question? Councilor Barch. Yes. Um, Mayor, the way it is on this order, and I think I had brought this to your attention about a year ago or so on okay. the open checkbook, and I have had some residents call me, not just from Ward 6, okay. okay, in regards to in the open checkbook, especially under legal, mm -hmm. where it would say pay out to such and such a, an attorney's firm, yeah. but it does not say for what. Mm -hmm. So people are asking again on that open checkbook, and I think when we had a meeting with Tony Patillo in your office, he also brought that up too, of it not clarifying of exactly on that open checkbook what the case was, and and I think he's right about that, or anybody else. I think we should be told, well, yes, just like you said, it was the title and the work being done. That's important so that they know that. Okay. Um, I will uh, um, think about how we could uh, do that. Um, we generally, this is pulling information directly from, the open checkbook pulls directly from Eunice, Exactly. Um, and oftentimes a legal bill will come um, and it'll have multiple, uh, you know, multiple <coughs> things that it's paying for. It right. might be the city councilors, uh, the city solicitor's time drafting an ordinance or doing work for the city council. It may be for DPW, it might be for planning, it may, he does isolate the work he does depending on the department, um, but then he bills us, you know, on a monthly or quarterly basis. So. Um, and I'm just letting you know what yeah, no, are saying. I understand. Um, I understand. Uh, obviously, those uh, documents are available to people um, to a certain <coughs> extent. With, with some limitations, there are some sensitive matters that we don't, we're not able to share invoices on. Um, but I can, uh, let me think about a way that we can do that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Your point is well taken. All right. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Next is 16228, in order to declare surplus space at Northampton High School for the purpose of leasing 
to public access television. In order that, whereas the school department has leased out space at the North End High School to Northampton Cable TV since 2006, and the current lease with NCTV is ending in August of this year. And whereas before the space can be leased again, the school committee and the city council must vote to declare the space is not needed for school department purposes, and the school department must obtain permission from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education to lease the surplus space. And whereas School administration feels there is substantial benefits to the students having a public access television station located in the building and whereas uh, the RFP will be issued to lease the space for public access television purposes and whereas Mass General Law 30B Section 16 requires a vote of the City Council to surplus any interest in public property prior to its disposal now order that the space at Northampton High School currently occupied by NC NCTV is declared surplus and available to be leased for public access television purposes for a period not to exceed 10 years. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Second. Second. The mayor's here uh, if you have questions. You may recall we came uh, forward about a year or so ago to get a short extension to NCTV's existing lease, um, and that was to allow time for the school department to work on the sort of the longer term process. So this basically, um, the school committee voted, and now it requires the city council to vote to basically surplus a lease interest um, that this space that's been used as the NCTV studios for the past 10 years um, is still surplus to school needs and, and then can be put out to bid um, for another lease, uh, which presumably um, someone who's an operator of a public access television station has an opportunity to bid on. So that's what this is a requirement. And we also have to get permission from DESE, as it says in the... Um, uh, and we had to do a similar procedure for Clark School up at the Leeds School um, and any other time we lease active school buildings. Okay. Counselor. Um, when this contract was originally established back under uh, the administration of uh, Mayor Higgins, um, the intent was to inc incorporate a school in, the, in a part of the building that originally had bigger plans for it when they did the build out, but there wasn't the money to actually fill the space. And it was to provide an access, a place, a space for access system, but at the same time provide a laboratory for the high school students. It is met that mission and then some. Uh, we have, uh, NCTV is, is actually the envy of a lot of access systems in the country, not just Massachusetts. And I know I've experienced directly um, the value that it's had for the students at the school. And we actually, a lot of producers come from the high school who are producing stuff on uh, uh, high quality, professional grade, thoughtful, provocative programming on community access television. It's not people sitting between two plants just blabbing about records they heard. It's so, uh, it was, it seems that it was a good decision. There was some resistance at first. Um, for a variety of reasons, but now all those, I believe, all those doubts have since been dispelled, and they've proven, uh, and regardless of what access system's there, although I'm pulling for NCTV as far as that goes, but the, um, the proximity of that type of media delivery system, and it's not just television, it's actually streaming, and it's computer uh, education, it's media education, it's also promoting um, abstract thinking and debate and public uh, um, journalism. It really is. It really is a, a, a tremendous boom, and and I'm I'm I think it makes a lot of sense that we continue to keep using that space as effectively as we have. Council of the Barge. Yes, um, I'm going to echo what our council president just stated because. I mean, I'm supporting NCTV, Matt, and I have to agree with you. I, I think it's excellent having this in the schools and in a building of a school, and I, I just think it's very educational. And I want to thank you for what you have said. Councilor Klein. I have a point of clarification. Um, is this, this is an order that should, is under Finance Committee, because according to our agenda, it seems like it's a separate is it a finance? Are we in the right place here? It's a surplusing property. So as finance such. Finance also acts as a property yeah. committee. Okay. Like um, when we sell buildings or okay. that. Okay, 
I, I was just confused by the way the agenda is set up because we have two. Um, Are you talking about the finance agenda? It's not a financial finance. order per yeah. se. It's, yeah. Yeah. So there were three financial orders, and this comes under orders as a separate thing. So I was right. just not clear about where it fits in the agenda. Disposition of the property okay. um, fall under the aegis of finance. It used to be the it used to be a property commission or committee. Okay. That's we got merged. <laughs> got merged and improved. But merged. So it shows up. Any in other a different place here in the agenda, yes. though. Okay. Excellent. Any other questions on this one? It basically is just maintaining the status quo with our relationship, and they're having the space at the high school. Uh, well, in I I can't predict the outcome of the RFP it, process, but uh, I. I Theoretically. Theoretically, yeah. We I, it basically is saying rise, uh, essentially what you're saying is you're, that the space is surplus to city needs and can be uh, put out to bid for leasing again. That's mm -hmm. mostly what you're saying. But yeah. Um, Any other questions? No. Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please aye. say aye. 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 Any opposed? Next. Next, in, next one is 16. 230 in order to accept a storm drain easement on Holyoke Street. Did you skip a uh, five year contract for ticket oh, processing? Ticket yeah. processing? Did we skip ticket processing? Yeah. We did Sorry. skip ticket processing. Moving right along too quickly. Everybody loves their tickets, right? 16229 order to authorize a five year contract for ticket processing services. Order that whereas ticket processing services are necessary to efficiently operate our parking enforcement program and whereas a five year contract is necessary for continuity and consistency for ticket processing services and provides the best value to the city. Now therefore order that the treasurer collector parking enforcement division is authorized to enter into a five year contract for provision of ticket processing services. We have a motion. Second. Second. Questions for the mayor? So this is um, the uh, existing contract with our current vendor expired. Um, our treasurer collector's office uh, uh, did research and, and have uh, determined the, um, the technology that they want to go with for a future contract. And um, uh, Mass General Law requires that any contract over three years requires the council to approve uh, basically a contract longer than three years. Um, you may recall we've done this with, you know, software at our schools and textbooks and things like that where we've wanted to do a longer term contract. Um, uh, this is essentially the system that the PEOs use, the handheld devices that, that, um, that uh, process tickets, take photographs, uh, print tickets, all those kinds of things. And, um, and so uh, the current ex expired and, and we are going to be uh, uh, renewing and this is actually go going to be upgrading as well to fit with the new tech, new parking technology that we'll be bringing in, so it'll be more modern and up to date. So, excellent, Councilor Barge. Yes, um, it's a five-year contract. Apparently, the system is working, and it's less expensive than putting money in the machine. So, I mean, how can we go wrong? Councilor Rizal, um, is this the same amount of money as the previous? Contract, or was it already spelled out in the budget that's been approved for the? That's city? a good. Because that, no dollar figure. So. Yeah, um, I will. I will have to check on that. It's a contract that we have, I believe, as part of the capital program. We had money put aside uh, to upgrade, or knowing that we had to upgrade that system, we do have money in the. Con I'll check on that and let you know. Yeah. Okay. I will find out. It's a. It's a. It's a software system as well as, it's a proprietary software system as well as the handheld devices mm -hmm. that then sync with the software. I'll find out for you. Well, yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, it's something obviously we have to have. Yeah. It would just be good to have exactly. that dollar figure yep. for a second reading to totally. know what we're doing. Yeah, totally. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, Nash? Yeah, so I'm new to this. Yep. <laughs> and so are we approving um, the okay to negotiate or the okay to go into contract for a fee that we don't know about? I, that's the part I'm not getting straight. Well, if I, um, yeah, and, and I, I apologize that we don't have a, uh, a dollar figure on this. Um, if, if there was uh, funds in the, uh, so if it was a three-year contract, right. um, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Um, 
because we would have money we, we have money in the OM budget for the parking division uh, for this equipment um, and we either through their OMM account or through the capital plan it's just when you want to do a contract longer than three years uh, you're required to have this vote um, to go to the uh, legislative body uh, of the community um, I guess it would be town meeting in a uh, in a town uh, so really what you're voting on but I understand the point that you'd like to know what the contract is I totally get that um, but you're basically allowing us to um, renew a contract for technology that we have to have but we want to do it for five years because we get a better price for five years plus we don't want to have to go through this process in three years it's a and this know we need it we're gonna have it and we don't want to have to do it every three years we'd rather do it for five years so yeah it does have a dedicated funding stream it does uh, because it's, it, yeah, it's, it's paid for at a parking revenue but I can get you a clearer picture on that um, ASAP yeah uh, oops it's her turn this time council oh, scare um, so just to clarify this is just for the the technology sort of from the kind of the front part of getting a ticket like the actual getting the ticket yes. it doesn't have anything to do with the part from our end of trying to receive money for that ticket or if someone wanted to challenge a ticket Right, like it's there's no attachment between that technology and our process. Um, what it what it basically does is the um, the PEOs have a carry around their handheld device, uh, which has a keypad. It has a built-in camera. It has a built-in printer, um, and basically it's how they issue tickets. Um, and then those tickets are automatically uploaded. Um, the current system, they actually, because of older technology, they have to put them into a cradle at the end of the night, and it gets uploaded into the system. All the photographs, it basically becomes the, the evidence of the ticket. It's the copy of the ticket. It's all the, that stuff. Um, and so when someone comes in to say, I didn't get, you know, I wasn't parked outside the lines, or I, you know, I, my ticket wasn't expired or whatever it is they are able to pull up the record of the ticket as it occurred on on site okay. so part of it's an accounting software part of it's sort of an evidentiary I guess software um, and uh, and that's how it works uh, the actual payment of the tickets um, happens uh, it gets kind of integrated in with Munis so that we um, so that we're you know, keeping track of paying the tickets so we know who's paid and who hasn't paid, and then all the receipts and everything get put into our central finance system. I only ask because we've heard some complaints from people on um, the process for um, challenging a ticket, mm -hmm. and but this locking into five years on this doesn't. Not at all. at all. No, the process is the process, okay. and you know, there's a, um, you know, our process has been very closely vetted. Um, uh, our, our appeal process I mean our ticket appeal process I think it almost I think it, I don't know if it went to the SJC I think it went to the SJC yeah, it did. <laughs> which of the Supreme All Judicial the Court the top. so our, our <laughs> process has been modified to conform to uh, to that but yeah um, so it, yeah but it won't affect that process yeah Councilor Donnelly you got another follow up um, maybe you mentioned this already but when does the current contract expire and when do you need this new contract Good you question. Like imminently or no, uh, I, I'm not. I'm. I will check on it. I know that we. Uh, it, it's happening in the next couple of months okay. um, because I think we did a slight. I think it was going to extend to the end of January. Uh, end of January, and we basically pr got an extension to the contract, okay. um, which you're allowed to do without going out to bid if it's a small enough amount of an extension, right. because we were trying to time it with the. We're also trying to make this system compatible with the new kiosks um, because it has to communicate with the kiosks right. as well. Right. Um, and so they're going to be wireless. They'll communicate with the kiosks as well as communicating with the, um, because under the new system, people will be you know, putting their information into the kiosk and this will, the PEOs will know who has or hasn't basically paid right. at the kiosk mm -hmm. system. So, right. uh, so it's so we had we had to put out very specific bid specs that aligned with the new kiosk system. Right. So, and then when we got the pricing, it's clear that it's a, it's better for us to go with a longer contract than a shorter contract mm -hmm. price wise. So, okay. well, so we're not in any danger of this not happening. But I right. can get you the information before the next reading. Yeah, and I guess I I feel like I know we're in finance, but I kind of just put it out there for discussion. I mean, is there any reason to just take the first vote in two weeks or does that tie up 
any of the? I, I don't know. I, I, I'll have to, I can check on that between now and when you take it up in the regular meeting. Okay. Well, see if, if you don't know if it would cause a problem, then I guess we ought to proceed. Yeah. Today, then. Any other questions on this exciting topic? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Go so from tickets to sewers. 16.230, in order to accept a storm sewer easement on Holyoke Street. Order that whereas a brick market, a, a, a brick market street to Mill River storm sewer built circa 1846 is located on the property that was formerly the Northampton Lumber Company at Pleasant Street and Holyoke Street, shown on parcel 171 on assessor's maps, 32C, and now or formerly was owned by Gail M. Labarge. And whereas the storm sewer has no recorded easement where it crosses the Northampton Lumber Company property, and whereas the city received a Mass Works grant that allows it to replace 310 feet of the storm sewer, both replacing legacy infrastructure and leveraging economic development, and whereas the Valley Community Development Corporation is under contract to purchase the Northampton Lumber property, and it's offered to donate an easement for the replacement of the storm sewer on that property. Now, therefore, it be ordered that the city of Northampton City Council authorizes the mayor to acquire by gift uh, storm drain easements in or on the Northampton Lumber Company property on such terms and conditions as the mayor deems advisable. Do we have a motion to finance? I have a motion. And uh, excuse me, I'd like to make a disclosure. Gail Labarge is not a relative at all. And I had to do that last time when we approved the project. Second. Second. Any comment or questions? Uh, no, so this is um, this is part of the Lumberyard project, and as uh, counselors may be aware, uh, we recently were successful in securing a MassWorks uh, infrastructure grant, um, uh, and part of the funding for that infrastructure grant is the replacement of um, replacement and relocation of a storm section of storm sewer uh, that runs along this property and needs to be replaced and upgraded in order for the Valley CDC project to move forward. So this is part of that project. Uh, we need to have an official easement in place uh, to be able to do the construction and to site the storm sewer. So that's why we're uh, coming forward. And obviously, the owners uh, have graciously agreed to donate the easement to us. Um, to and so that's, this, is, this, is, this will allow us to file that and have legal right to be able to do the work there. Any questions on this for the mayor? I have a disclosure too. I am not related to Ms. Labarge, but she is my client, so I'm going to have to abstain on this and in the regular meeting. Question over here, Councilor Bidwell. Uh, my understanding is this is one of the last hurdles to, to overcome before Valley can proceed with the project. Is that more or less the case? Or well, they had um, they had some funding challenges, and so it was uh, uh, the, the the infrastructure one was a big piece of it. Right. Um, and the extent of the infrastructure and what it was going to cost. So um, that's why we included it in our MassWorks um, application, uh, uh, that which includes you know transportation infrastructure, sidewalk infrastructure, uh, to support both that project and the Live 155 project. Um, but a huge percentage of that funding is also for that infrastructure. They still have to. Um, they are still finalizing their funding um, through uh, the state. Um, they have to go through that formal um, supportive housing round to finalize that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, um, I'm very confident, uh, and I, the Secretary of uh, Housing and uh, Economic Development, all but said that you know it's a it's it's a go for them. Uh, so yes, this was a major hurdle for them. So I'm excited that the city was able to collaborate with them and, and that this grant was available to pay for the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. yep. Councilor Rodell. Can I just offer brief congratulations on the MassWorks grant and all the work that your office did to get it because this is an example of, um, a concrete example of um, a benefit it's bringing to the city and I think this is great. Most definitely, thank you. Yeah, and it was our second try. We got turned down right. last yeah. year. Mm -hmm. um, so we put on the full court press this year and, and, uh, and I think that the combination of the, I think it was a good project, but also I think the added incentive of creating this housing downtown um, 
near transit, you know, yep. near um, with affordability. It was sort of it sort of touched all the bases. So um, we're really excited. Yeah, and I would say that the um, the uh, it's not really I can't really find it anywhere, but the uh, MassWorks program just submitted to the legislature kind of its report for 2016. And um, in it, they highlighted five or six projects, and Northampton's project was one of the projects highlighted. So uh, Representative Cocott shared that with me. But it's not a report I can find anywhere else. But so anyway, so thank you. Any other question on the sewer? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 And all abstain. Any opposed? All right, and our last one tonight is 16231, an order to authorize the mayor to acquire a gift, uh, one gift or more gifts, public right of way easements on the Sturbridge Development LLC property at Village Hill. Or, order that whereas in 2009 the City Council authorized the city through the Conservation Commission to accept deed, a deed or deeds to buffer on the outside of the developed Village Hill area at the former Northampton State Hospital on the North Campus and whereas Sturbridge Development LLC owns land on the northwest corner of Village Hill, um, more particularly shown on the 2016 assessor's map as 31C17 and whereas Sturbridge Development has offered through the land use permitting process to donate one or more public right of way easements to allow access from their housing development to the space, the open space on the northerly side of the development for pedestrian access and eventual multi-use trails. Now therefore it be resolved that the City of Northampton City Council authorizes the Mayor to acquire by gift uh, one or more public right-of-way easements on Sturbridge Development LLC property on such terms and conditions as the Mayor deems advisable. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Second? Second. Okay. Second. Questions for the Mayor? Um, so as uh, councillors know, the uh, Village Hill development um, has a combination of private development and then there's a lot of public open space, public walkways and trails that were all part of the permitting process. Um, and as the development has slowly moved along, we've come forward with these easements um, as the trail system has developed. This is the um, sort of latest section. Uh, which is actually Pecoy uh, development um, who built sort of a first section and they're building a little bit further back from where they are currently. Um, sort of if you kept going on Village Hill Drive, it's sort of to the back left and it sort of most directly abuts the old um, state hospital lands where people walk and jog and um, walk their dogs on leashes and follow leash laws. Um, <laughs> The, uh, and so um, this is actually, again, as part of the permitting process, they're now at a phase uh, where uh, they have taken site control and they are going to grant us these additional easements for the right-of-ways for the public paths that are part of the network up there. So we're just accepting them um, and uh, they'll be part of the overall trail system. Questions? Councilor Labarge. Mayor, is it, how many easements do you know exactly? Is it one or what is it? Uh, re remind me the language again because I agree with you um, the language is a little two, two, bit. Um, it's, uh, it's very planner esque. One yes, exactly. Uh, there were, there's, there's, I know there's a trail section that then connects with kind of a park section, and then there's another trail section that connects down into kind of takes you down along the Mill River, um, you know, along where the fields are along the Mill River. So I think it's sort of three separate segments. Um, yeah, because on here it says donate one or more public right of way easements. Yes, and so I think it's, un, I don't know exactly uh, how, if they're contiguous or not contiguous, or, uh, so I think he's left it <coughs> somewhat open for that purpose. And looking the map, at so the map, Mayor, I mean, that? it's so difficult to, to figure this out. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I can ask. And there's Mr. nine of us here with glasses on. Yeah, yeah. I can ask. I can ask Mr. Fiden to get us a bigger map if that's helpful. It's they were, very they were difficult free, right? They're free because they were offered. They were graciously donated through the permitting process, so they're not costing us anything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. There are three indicated on the map. There's th yes. I think those yes. are the three, and I think um, I'm not sure why it says one or more. I know um, because I was questioning that. Yep. But my reasons for bringing them up about the, about the mapping, yeah. I mean, being in family who are engineers, mm -hmm. they couldn't believe this either. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very difficult to read this. Okay. My question is also with the easements, 
that will include walking dogs, correct? Uh, the conservation uh, conservation lands in the city are, unless otherwise posted, are you're generally allowed to walk your dog on a leash. Yes. Thank you. Um, other questions, dog related or otherwise? I just want to say that this actually conforms with the original mission of, of Village Hill Development that that uh, providing uh, access to public space and expanding public space and um, I'm I'm glad to see it and it conforms and comports with everything that we've been talking about for a quarter of a century actually other questions hearing none all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance please say aye aye any opposed you good with this counselor here yes yes yeah okay good um, <laughs> Then with that, I know of no new business, so we're set with finance. Yep. Uh, motion to adjourn. Okay. Second? I think so. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we're back in out of recess and back in the regular body and we get back to work. And now we're going to vote on these orders, and this should be noted, the ones that uh, I am, uh, financial orders that I will be referring to have all been approved, as you just witnessed in uh, finance. Uh, first item is 16.226. It's in order to authorize <coughs> expenditure of $3,120 from Senior Services Gift Fund. This is the first Mr. reading. Approved. Motions made. Second. 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 Okay. Any further discussion on this item? Roll call, please, Pam. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Okay. That passes in first reading. Next up is 16.227, and it's an order to authorize payment of a prior year bill in the amount of $1,379 for legal work on this first Thank reading. To approve. Second. Motion's made and second. Any further discussion on this item? Roll call, please, Pam. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Goodwill? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Okay, passes in first reading. Item 16.216, in order to authorize the purchase of five and a half acres on Birch Pit Road. This is second reading. Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion on this in second reading? Roll call, please. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Uh, that passes in first reading. Second. I have a second reading, sorry, so it is passed. Item 16.218 to item 16.225. This is the Community Preservation uh, Committee recommendations for funding, and I will list the orders and we'll take them as a group if there are no objections. Yes, I'd like okay. to. Um, second. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Uh, We've done it by acclamation, so. Uh, item 16.218 is an order regarding Beaver Brook, Broadbrook. Greenway Improvements, the Broadbrook Coalition and Lead Civic Association of $16,947. I forgot that this is this is an alliterative hell. Uh, item 16.219, an order regarding Burt's Bog, affordable housing and open space, an office of, this is uh, the Office of Planning and Sustainability. The number is 234,700. Uh, item 16.220, an order regarding Broadbrook to Beaverbrook Acquisition, Northampton Conservation Commission, $40,000. Item 16.221, an order regarding the Connecticut, uh, Connecticut River Greenway Improvements, Northampton Office of Planning and Sustainability, to the tune of $90,000. Item 16.222, uh, an order regarding Hampshire County Courthouse Restoration, Hampshire County Council of Governments, $100,000. Item 16.223, an order regarding 51 Main Street Historic Building Study. <coughs> this is for Smith Charities, $10,000. Item 16.224, an order regarding Mineral Hills Acquisition, the Northampton Conservation Commission, uh, $240,000. And finally, item 16.225, an order regarding Conservation Fund, uh, the Northampton Conservation Commission, for eighty thousand dollars, is there a motion? Move to approve. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion on these items? And this is in second reading. Roll call, please. Yes. 
I'm going to abstain because of the Smith Charities one that's involved in this group. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Ladonna? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Yes. Okay. That passes in second reading with one abstention. Now up to orders. Item 16.228. This is in order to declare surplus space at Northampton High School for the purposes of leasing public access television. First reading. I'll accept a motion. Approved. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Sheriff. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Yes. Right, that passes in first reading. Item 16.229 is in order to authorize a five-year contract for ticket processing services. First reading. Move to approve. Second. Motion's made second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Lavard? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Okay. Passes in first reading. Item 16.230, in order to accept a storm drain easement on Holyoke Street. First reading. Move to approve. Motion's made and seconded. Discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 All right, that passes in first reading with one abstention. Item 17.231, in order to authorize the mayor to acquire by gift one or more public right of way easements on the Sturbridge Development LLC property. Two per second. Motion's been seconded. This is in first reading. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Okay. Passes in first reading. Item 17.232. Uh, this is in order to modify the city council rules. It requires only one reading. I'll accept a motion and put it on the floor. Move to Second. Discussion. Council Murphy. I would move we refer it to the committee on legislative matters. I second that. Motion's made for referral. Discussion on the referral? Councilor Dow. Um, this order to amend the rules principally deals with the process of referral to legislative matters. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow, meta. <laughs> you've entered a wormhole. Um, <laughs> I would just say, I mean, we, we certainly could do that. They're sort of, um, in a sense, they're superficial. In a sense, they, they switch us back to what we had before, and I could explain in more detail if we if we debate the order tonight. But I would suggest we could debate the order tonight in council, and I will try to make it as brief as possible for my part. Uh, Council Murphy. It appears that this has garnered a lot of public attention with regards to due process. So my recommendation would be let's add a little more due process. I realize that you know it might technically be a simple thing, but in this case, I, I, I would recommend we defer to the due process. We did actually put this preemptively on the Monday agenda, thinking it may get referred, so it may be back real quick, but. Councilor Barge. Yes, um, I have great concerns. Um, I have received some calls today. Um, I don't know anything about my computer or if anything was on that. But there's great concerns about the language on this, and I think with the due process that we should bring it back and bring it to legislative matters. Let the people come in, Councilor O'Donnell, with the transparency. If they don't show up, then that's their problem. I, I know you're shaking your head, but I think it's due process here of transparency. I mean, what would be the problem to hold this back? Uh, you, the question was directed to you. So. Yeah, I mean, I suggested it need not be referred, but I don't oppose referring it. Okay. However, we should know what the order is before we make a decision on it. So I, unless everyone is confident having read it, 
that they're all set with it. Otherwise, I would offer an explanation because that would be in the purpose of transparency, too. I would appreciate an explanation and some context. Mm -hmm. As for requests, an item. Mm -hmm. No, and I don't, I, don't, I don't mind us talking about it. Well, it's, it's fine. It's, but given the fact that we're debating a referral, but there's been a, 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 request. a request for information, which is helpful, mm -hmm. which allows me to allow Councilor O'Donnell mm -hmm. to now Tell us, tell us what we're <laughs> so we, we followed our your process <laughs> and we did it correctly and I was holding out hoping someone would do that. So thank you. Councilor O'Donnell, you have okay. a question. This order switches us back to our convention previously, which was that matters would not originate in committees. When we made certain rule changes, um, we gave committees essentially the power to bring matters up and put things forward without things being first referred to them by the City Council. The value of that, in my opinion, was that of initiative. We were giving the, the City Council committees something to do other than act as receptacles for things that we submitted to them and uh, to wait their reply. Um, I still think that's a good idea, but in reaction to some of what I've heard from um, some on the council and and others, I'm happy to switch it back. Doesn't doesn't bother me. And so that's what this order would do. It would switch it back so that a referral would be required of all ordinances before the legislative matters committee acted upon them. It's important that people know that. Um, a referral by itself does not guarantee transparency. Transparency is guaranteed by posting things on an agenda in advance, allowing people to know about it, allowing people to comment on it, and giving ample time for debate. A referral is neither here nor there. However, if people think a referral creates the appearance of, of a due process, then that's important as well. And so that's the purpose of this order, to switch us back so that all items that the Legislative Matters Committee considers are first referred to it. So it would fulfill what the council from Ward 6 wishes to do. Uh, Councilor? Yes. Um, I understand, Councilor O'Donnell, of what you're saying here. Okay. But it's what has been brought to my attention from people with this new language in here. Okay. And I know, Councilor Dwight, you had received some calls, I would assume, today also of other language on here that people are uncomfortable with, and especially with 2.6.141. Okay, they're saying that they want to have added on for legal form and character, and I have to agree with that. I think you're talking about something that is realistic here and shows a transparency. I think what has caused this problem has to do with a due process with a stormwater utility fee. People felt, okay, and they have rights to feel this way. They are our people here in the city of Northampton. And I think in due respect, let's put it into legislative hands and let's have them come and say how they feel so you can hear what people have to say about the language on this. Um, Councilor O'Donnell? Yep, I do not oppose referring it to a committee. The entire purpose of this order is to make sure that matters are referred to committee. Um, and in addition, um, the rules do ask the solicitor to review the legal form and character of all ordinances. That isn't a separate part of the rules. That exists. And, the, and this is part of the conversation that I had that actually the the purpose of submitting everything to the solicitor is to do just that, and it is embedded in the rules already. It would be redundant, but not out of order to put it in here if it if it made people feel more comfortable. I think, I think as far as sending it back to committee, what it would be helpful for is, and by the, there's not a lot of phone calls, there's not a lot of messages. There's there's, there's a there's a group of people who have expressed concern. They will probably show up at legislative matters, have an opportunity to have a more expansive conversation about this. It should be noted these are council rules. These are the rules by which we govern ourselves and the way we conduct polity. That in, we are basically setting up conditions and requirements for ourselves. These, and, and with the intent embedded, and I 
This is Council O'Donnell's original mission was to create and expand transparency and access. So it's, it's, we're, <laughs> I, I think the only reason I would send it back to committee is for an opportunity for the community, for the citizens who have expressed concern exactly. that they can at least be mm -hmm. um, apprised of what, what the intent, the purpose, and the effect of these rules will eventually be. Council Murphy. Mm -hmm. Well, I just wanted to let everybody know, and, and I think the members of Legislative Matters know this, but as chair, before every meeting, I speak with the solicitor, be sure that he's reviewed everything and it, it, he's comfortable with it, and advise him whether I think things on the agenda require his attendance or not. So just to let you all know, if you're not on that committee, before we act on anything, I've spoken to him and he says, yep, everything passes muster with me. Go ahead and take action if you wish to. And then we discuss, do we or don't we need him there based on how controversial or what the issue may be. Right. So that, that happens for every meeting. And for what it's worth, this rule has been vetted by the solicitor. <laughs> this, is the most, this is the most meta rule I have ever seen. <laughs> so, Councilor Bidwell. So as, as a practical matter, the effect of this would mean that nothing would be taken up at legislative affairs as, as an ordinance without having been referred by the council and having first been on the council's agenda. Is that correct? It would have to be referred to legislative matters. Yeah. By the council. As opposed to, what Council O'Donnell did was, and I will speak, I'll correct me if I'm wrong as far as, but allow us the opportunity to generate legislation from the committees. If the committees, uh, for instance, city services had crafted something in response to their study that they wanted to submit that it could come through, it would go th through legislative matters and come to us on the floor that we could debate there. They could generate their own uh, law and then eventually be debated on the council floor in public as well as be debated in, in committee. But, um, and I don't think that the actually, the, that's still able, but if we add on the additional thing that comes here first, we touch it, send it back without a debate usually. So mm -hmm. it gets referred. This is the most expansive debate we've had on, on, re on a referral as far as I can tell. But the, uh, it would be, so it's sent back on the hopper. The idea is, is that in large part, a lot of the, our work that we do, and we're gonna, um, in discussion with the administrative assistant, we're trying to figure out how to streamline this a little better. Sometimes it'd take up to three to four months for something to actually be affected because of the way scheduling occurs and it, it's problematic. So we're gonna work on that. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilor Bidwell still has the floor. Oh. Well, I, I, I would just add that I, I, I do have sympathy for the scheduling complications of this, but as someone who a year ago was the newcomer, I must say that it's been helpful for me to know that a council agenda sort of serves as the, the gatekeeping function. It's, it, it's where you can keep track of what's going on. Uh, and, and so I find it helpful to know that something wouldn't be going to legislative affairs without at least just for tallying purposes having shown up on a council agenda. Well, the, the other thing that we're working on is to create a way to track for counselors, for citizens, for anybody, mm -hmm. to track uh, the lifespan of a bill like Schoolhouse Rock, but something probably a little more, less animated. <laughs> Council Murphy, yeah. But I got comment today from people as well, and, and the point that they highlighted to me was we watch the council agenda, and so if we see something of interest go out to committee, then we know we can go to those committees where we can talk as long That's as right. the committee will let us, we're not held to the three minutes. So if we see something go out to committee, we can go to a committee meeting and talk to them for an hour if, if it's salient and we're doing, we're making progress. So that when it comes back to the floor, our comments have been heard. But if it comes from committee and we don't know it's there, when it shows up here, it's ready to be voted on. And we got three minutes at the beginning of a council meeting and that's all we get because it was vetted in committee and it wasn't on our radar because mm -hmm. we're watching on what's going into committee from council. That was the argument I heard today mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. give us a shot at knowing it's going to committee because we'd much rather go comment at committee where there's some give and take because when it comes, if it comes hot back here to be voted on, we don't really have any give and take. We can only make public comment. That was the logic that was mm -hmm. mentioned to me today. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
And um, just one final comment, then I'll take a book from the Council from Ward 5's book and call the question, because we're debating referral here. Yeah. Well, after everyone has spoken, of course. Um, that's exactly what the order that I wrote would Fixes. do. So just to be clear, that's what I'm proposing right. we do. But I'm not worried about okay, cool. it out, because it'll come back. <laughs> I haven't gotten any emails for some reason. Well, maybe one or two. Sure. Um, no one contacted me on this. Um, yes, this is just reverting back to what we've always done. And to make the point again, things will always go to legislative matters. It's never been bypassed in any way. My only thing is I just want to note a Scrivener's error on 5.2.5. .5. The last sentence, matter, should have two teeth. As opposed to the Latin mother. Correct. Has to go to find to legislative committee and to Mater. And to your mother. Okay. Good point. <laughs> Scrim was error noted. All right. On the referral, all those in favor of referring to legislative matters, please say aye. 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 Okay. Long that. Such was all in We barely escaped the wormhole. Oh. Um, next up, the, <laughs> yes. When would this be going to on Monday? It'll be on the Monday agenda. Monday. So we are going to make it to be posted in time. It's already posted. Oh, it is. He anticipated. He anticipated. He anticipated. Anything has happened can happen in the worm. <laughs> Thank you. Now our ordinances, <laughs> item seventeen point two three three, an ordinance <laughs> relative to school zones. This is a referral. This is to refer to transportation parking commission and the committee on legislative matters. To refer. Second. Any discussion on the referral? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, the only updates I have. Oh. I, I just wanted to point out that this one did make it to Monday's agenda, the ordinance for school zones, but it won't be taken up by the committee because it hasn't been Because it has to go to T transportation. It's from parking. What didn't make it? This. It's got to go to transportation first. Transportation parking first. That is the order that we just described. So, yeah. so it is on Monday's agenda. Yeah. But they won't be taking it up because it hasn't gone to TPC. Okay. Uh, as far as updates, the MMA conference, uh, I don't know who's planning on attending. Um, there's also some kind of march going on or something after that. I don't know if anyone's interested in that, but um, um, that's, our, that's our one junket. Get his counselors. Uh, there are no information requests, there's no new business. I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you all very much. Happy New Year. Thank you.